Welcome to St. Augustine this evening, the Mike Davis Show. We are here on Juneteenth, June 19th, 2024. Uh, we are the only show that's live today on the 904 Now Network, we mm -hmm. believe, uh, in working a lot. We don't mind working. We work a lot of holidays, and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Some people feel like they're bankers, even uh -huh. though they're podcasters. But we're not going to name any names. Pete Melfi, um, Davey Hartzell, and Troy Blevins. We would never name names. We just won't do that because we love those guys. Of course we do. <laughs> and they'll be back tomorrow. And God bless them. They work Fridays and we don't. So <laughs> we're very true. happy about that. We've got a brand new uh, co-host tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody's going to be sitting in with us on Wednesdays. So Levi Moore, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's <laughs> nice to have you. So uh, now uh, we have added to the best looking podcast show on the network. We have Amanda. Hi, everybody. We got Amanda. <laughs> we have Levi. And I'm just kind of around here. I'm just hanging on. So, yeah, we do. We've got the youngest show. We do. <laughs> we have the youngest show. I'm the oldest guy on the network and we still have the youngest show. I feel so happy about stats like that. Right. <laughs> the rest of those guys, they just not. We have the only female producer. Yeah. We do. Hi, everybody. <laughs> we do. It's awesome. All right. So yeah. we're going to make some money real quick. We'll do some reads. And then we are going to get into all kinds of things, including uh, kind of all kinds of trouble. About, well, we're going to try not to get in too much <laughs> trouble today. We're going to try to try to behave ourselves. And I'm going to try not to cuss at the uh, baseball game that's going on right now where the Seminoles are down Sorry, four to everybody. nothing in the top of the fourth. So if I yell... It's probably not at somebody in here. It's probably at somebody playing in Omaha. All right. Uh, Powell Heating and Air Conditioning. They've uh, been in St. John's County for 39 years. Their dedication to customer service is evident in everything they do. From the minute they take your phone call to the time they get there to fix your AC unit to the time they fix it and they leave. You just, you know, these guys really care. They love their job. They've got an amazing uh, 15,000 square foot warehouse with uh, over 10 trucks it's fully stocked with parts and equipment. They work around the clock, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Nights, weekends, and holidays are included in that. Powell Heating and Air Conditioning, you need a good company. I know it's a little cooler today, but summer's coming back with a vengeance a little later. So Powell Heating and Air, give them a call, 904-794-2665. He gave me the food read, and I didn't have lunch today, guys. If you don't have dinner plans and you're as hungry as I am right now, then join the Tringali family for dinner. They've got Carmelo's Pizzeria, voted best pizza nine years running, New York-style brick oven pizza. They also have salads, subs, wings, and more. Or if you're feeling a little more carnivorous, you can go to 123 Burger House, voted best burgers three years running. They've got chicken wings, salads, authentic wood-fired pizza, and also ice cream for dessert. Both restaurants offer dine-in, takeout, or delivery through Bite Squad and Grubhub. Join the Tringali family for dinner. I might, I might do that. I'm hungry. All right, we've got Brightway Insurance, the Casey Agency. They opened their doors in 2008, and they have proudly stood by their customers through hurricanes, major floods, hail, and fires. Through these events, the agency has become a much-needed insurance resource in times of trouble and hardship. Honesty and integrity are the pillars of our core values, says owner Ashley Casey. They pride themselves on being insurance experts while developing strategies that help their clients meet their insurance needs. They truly enjoy the relationships that they have forged in the office, and everyone has a real love for St. Augustine. For all of your insurance needs, Brightway Insurance, the Casey Agency. I'm so glad I wasn't making faces while you were reading. I you had the you anyway. You had the camera on me. The yeah. whole, I looked up and I'm like, why am I on? And then I thought, oh my gosh, <laughs> did I hit the wrong button? Good. Yes. Did I hit the wrong button. You did. I was laughing. I was like, oh my gosh, please don't do anything silly right now. Land could, title of America. You could interrupt me so I don't look like an idiot. I was trying to He was be posing polite. for the camera. I was. It's like, gosh, more airtime for me. Uh, land title, whether you realize it or not, when you refinance the sale or purchase of a home, there's a title company involved. Don't get stuck with some out-of-town company that doesn't give a crap when you're faced with challenges. Stay local and choose Land Title of America. Just call or text Stephen Collins, 904-501-4481. He specializes in all types of real estate transactions. Land Title, your local title company ensuring America's land one title at a time because Amanda... Because they give a crap and we... it helps when I push the right button. <laughs> I was going to say, all right, also, um, staying alive, an evening on the Matanzas to benefit the Council on Aging is Sunday, August 4th from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. You can get tickets if you go to uh, the Council on Aging's website. 
Um, but it's going to be a great event. Uh, we love the Council on Aging, one of the great uh, nonprofits in town mm-hmm. that does an amazing job. Absolutely. And it is Juneteenth, and it is the West King Street Wednesday. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Our friends at Sailbird Distilling, they do a great job. So if you're a little thirsty and you need a cocktail, head down to Sailbird Distilling Company. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. So it is Juneteenth, yep. uh, our newest national holiday. Um, I kind of, I know that people are like, well, we don't need more national holidays. This one was kind of, I looked at it and said, you know what? It was the last day. It was in Galveston when the troops got there mm-hmm. and actually uh, let the uh, the slaves that were in Galveston know that, that yes, you're free. Granted, yep. the... Um, the war had ended before you, you had the slaves were freed before that, but that was back before then. Before the things, internet. Before the internet. It was before phones. It was before cell phones and smartphones. So I get the significance of it. I, mm-hmm. I think it's a, a pretty cool thing. Um, I just, I, you know, I, I, I will say this traffic today. There's a lot of people that had the day off. Yeah. Today was like a holiday weekend travel, driving around from job site to job site. Yeah. It was a lot more traffic because usually the last couple of weeks, there's been very little traffic. Mm-hmm. People have been working. Kids are out of school. They're not going to events after school. But today, lots of stuff. I didn't take in the holiday into account. I almost didn't make it here on time. <laughs> uh, welcome to the show, Troy Blevins. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's wild is I don't know if you know about this, but like Holmes used to be such a like a local cut through. Oh yeah, and now yeah. it's just so not busy. anymore. No, it's yeah. so busy. No. Well, they had a big festival there today. Um, they opened up the Kenwright, Kenwright, Wayne, right? I don't Wainwright. know. Wainwright. Wainwright. I don't That's know. Right. Is the house, the house that, the special Tro- house. Let's just say it this way. The house that Troy moved. The house that Troy moved. <laughs> the house that Troy moved. And, and they he had did a, a great festival. Job. Yes, they did. Um, and, it, and I think it's absolutely awesome that they got that house moved. They got it uh, to a great location and it gave it a new lease on life. I think it's really, really neat that that happened. And Troy, congratulations on all of your really hard work to get that. Absolutely. Done. And he was saddled with a bad budget. I know the guy that put the budget together. <laughs> Ken Wright, house ribbon cutting. Ken Wright. There we go. Ken Wright. There we go. Thank you. Yeah, but I, I think all, all of that is is, uh, is is incredibly important. I did, however, uh, was offended by one thing today. I got a, an, an email not from- Not the movie? No, not the movie. <laughs> are you over the movie? I'm not. <laughs> what movie are we talking about? I don't know. Oh, but so is, we do movies with Mike. Okay. And it's supposed to be last Tuesday of the month. Um, we moved it up cause I'm going to be traveling next week. So movies with Mike, he watches a movie and then we gives all watch you a movie Okay. and our um, audience, everybody. And then we talk about it with Davey and you're, you're invited if you want to. I'm a big movie guy. Um, yeah. You need so to come sit in. We did, we did life is beautiful. Okay. So we have like a, a wheel of destiny and it picks the movies okay. for us and they were nice to watch it. So we did life is beautiful, which is an Oscar winning movie. It's very like arty European. I'm not familiar uh, with subtitles. it. Subtitles. It won Oscars in the nineties. Um, well, I think it won an Oscar. And I think it was, it won lots won. of awards. Uno Oscar, not, not, not plural. more Oscars than Mike has won. <laughs> Touche. I didn't, think, I didn't think it deserved the one it got, but it's okay. <laughs> we all know that. I know, he I, completely lambasted the movie yesterday. I like it. And everybody was like here for an they, emotional conversation and he just blasted it. I was emotional. I just wasn't crying emotional. I was promised <laughs> I would cry during the movie. I was incensed during the movie. He was fuming. <laughs> Movies with happens. Mike. I'm going to have to join in on this. Yeah. yeah. So our next movie is what, Mike? Uh, the Final Countdown. The Final which Countdown. Was, which came out in the mid 80s. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a movie about a, a nuclear aircraft carrier that gets sucked back through time uh, to December 4th or 5th, okay. 1941 in the Pacific. Interesting plot. So it's kind plot. of an interesting plot. It, it's, it was actually a decent movie. Kirk Douglas was in it. There were a couple other really good. Uh, Martin Sheen was in it. A couple, you know, pretty decent performances and kind of that, you know, what would you do if you were in that situation? Nuclear submarine that gets sucked back in time. Aircraft mm-hmm. carrier. Aircraft carrier. The aircraft carrier. So it had the ability to alter what happened on December 7th. Hence gotcha, the whole gotcha. premise for the movie. So yeah, we'll, we'll see what that's like. But I it was it was okay because I think I can watch that one without getting mad. I've gotten mad at oh the first word. three movies, so I haven't I haven't been the best of reviewers. I've just ripped them apart. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and Davey, I think Davy has just gotten out of his counseling. This it might be a little off a. topic, but did you watch the Oppenheimer movie? I have not yet. See, a lot of people loved it, right? Yes. It won awards. I fell asleep during the movie and mm-hmm. I like movies. I like Christopher Nolan. Mm-hmm. I like the way that he directs them. I like everything about his work. I was very excited to see it. And it was so underwhelming yeah. that I couldn't stay awake during the movie. I heard it was too long. 
It's very I heard long. That it needed an editor. Every shot was a close up on a face with ominous background music. <laughs> there wasn't much talk about the actual devastation of the bombs. Yeah. Um, it was more so a look inside his head and okay. what was going on in in his head mm-hmm. and the his own trials and tribulations he was dealing with. I heard there was a love scene in there. They were trying to figure out why it got put in. Yeah, it made no sense. Just yeah. randomly thrown in there. Yeah. yeah. So, so that, that's have my you take. seen Oppenheimer? I haven't. That came out with Barbie and Oppenheimer, and I would, I just noped out of the movies yeah, was right then. Barbieheimer or something? Barbieheimer. Barbieheimer, because it I came out on the... It was one of the biggest weekends Hollywood's had since 2019. Don't since, get me started on Hollywood. Since the thing that totally happened and didn't happen and all of that, yes. And it was overrated. So I'm going to tell you, there was a skit back in the 1980s. It was um, Billy, Crystal and, Billy Crystal and Christopher Getz. And they were two kind of New York dudes, which they were, um, complaining about movies and the Oscars. And here's these blue collar guys looking at who was in the Oscars, right? And they got, you know, talking about, well, look who's up, right? It, it's um, uh, Gandhi, mm-hmm. right? Guy in a diaper. We got to watch a guy in a diaper, right? And they're like looking at it from this true blue collar. And he said like, where's the really good movies? Why didn't Terminator get nominated? Where's Avenging Angel? <laughs> um, it was just, it, so when I, when I see Hollywood reviews and everybody in Hollywood says, this is a great movie, I go, where are those two guys from Saturday Night Live? Because I'm yeah. telling you, this is not going to be good. Yeah, it's not going to be good. It hasn't been in forever. When was the last time you saw Best Picture Best actress, best director, best actor. When was the last time you saw all of those award winners? Deadpool won, but it didn't get any of them. <laughs> the first Deadpool was amazing. It was amazing. Second Deadpool kind of kind of floated there a little bit. How about parts. the third one that's coming out with very, Wolverine? Very much looking forward to that. We're However, talking about a watch party. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm very nervous about it. So <laughs> Disney now owns Deadpool. Oh, boy. Right. So Disney has killed... Indiana Jones. Yes. They've killed Han Solo. They killed uh, Luke Skywalker. They basically killed the entire Star Wars franchise. They're mm-hmm. in the they're in the process of grinding the bones into ash right now. Killed Marvel. They killed Marvel. Yeah. So if they kill Deadpool, I I don't know how I'm going to react to this. I just th- this will if Deadpool just tells dad jokes, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to react to that. Yeah, we'll have to see. I have seen one joke in the pre the trailer. I'm like, I can't believe Disney let that in. Yeah. I mean, Deadpool's kind of their outlier, right? Wolverine too. That's, you know, Deadpool is one of their first rated R movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wolverine, yeah. the, the, I think it was two times ago was their first rated R movie they ever did. Mm-hmm. And, um, which was actually a really good movie. I thought, so yep. we'll see what they do with this. I, I have high hopes. Uh, I, my cousin is reminding me that my brother and, and did Willie and Frank. That was the names of the Saturday Night Live character. Yeah. Yeah. Willie and Frank. And, and I guess in chemistry class, that's how you got through St. Joe back in those days. <laughs> That's how you got through St. Joe. Well, Disney owning that property. I mean, they make um, they make specialized Mickey Mouse ears for each of their characters. What would what would replace the ears on the Deadpool ears? I mean, there's a lot of ways. There's you a go. lot of stuff <laughs> you could go face. with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think of things that I'm allowed to say. What he could say without getting in yeah, trouble. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and so far the 17 things that rolled through my brain, none of them were good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a really. Uh, I'll be curious if Disney does that. I'm a Harrison Ford's movie Horizon comes out uh, the end of June. He has another movie. He's got two, so it's a two. No, I thought Kevin Costner was Horizon. Did I, who did I say? Harrison, Harrison Ford. Ford. Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin Costner. Yeah, Harrison Ford's in the in the 1923. So I apologize, uh, but Kevin Costner's going to. So that will be very interesting to see if that movie's any good because mm-hmm. it's a two parter, right? So really, if the first part bombs, no one's going to the second part. If yeah. the first part's great, everybody will want to go to the second part of the movie. Unless they've already made the second part, what keeps happening is the first part sucks so bad that they just kill the franchise. Well, one I mean, ca- Ghostbusters 2016 was supposed to be a whole franchise. Right. It was supposed to be a whole reboot. Was Disney with in charge of that Multiple. Too? Who knows? But Hollywood was, and they suck. So uh, Costner has already filmed both of them. One okay. was released the end of, uh, the end of June. And the other one is released, I think, the first or second week in August. So there's not a, a long time in between the two of them. They do get released back to back, which will be pretty interesting. All right. So I'm kind of I'm kind of curious to see if that that play. Other than that, there's not a whole lot. Those three movies are about all that I'm like, okay, yeah, I kind of want to go see that. 
Yeah. Except for Flashback Wednesdays. I don't know what's going on there. So maybe they'll have something <laughs> Wednesday. Because <laughs> that stuff was all done before that's they messed it theater. up. theater. Yeah. That's yeah. the theater selection, not Hollywood. Uh, Disney screwed up Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, oh, the next word. remake. I think it's so bad. I think they just canned the whole thing. I don't so, even think it's going to Netflix. No, they delayed it. They delayed it to mm. 2025. And they're supposed to be reworking it. Um, so like Peter Dinklage got super angry about them redoing, doing a live action Snow White and the seven dwarves because he's like dwarves really. So he's like the wealthiest small person actor. I don't know what you're allowed to say. And so he like has this it whole. true he's a South Pole elf? I'm just asking. <laughs> he's a grumpy. Will Ferrell texted me and wants elf, to know. That's what I know. Is this the gentleman that's in Game of Thrones? Yeah. Okay, I met him. Yeah. In Las Vegas. Yeah. I met him at the MGM Grand. Was he a grumpy elf? <laughs> he wasn't very friendly. Um, <laughs> he wasn't. He didn't really give off. I'm going to take a picture with you vibes. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, so. When he found out they were doing the remake, he had a hissy fit on every podcast, whatever, that he could sit in front of a microphone. And there was a ton of actors that were like, shut up. We want this job. Like, we want to be one of the seven dwarves. Like, you've already made your money. You can get hired. You're Peter frickin' Dinklage. Like, let us have a chance to become that. And if this is the way, then this is the way. Like, shut your mouth. And so Disney did not cast little people to be the dwarves. It was Snow White and seven magical creatures. And then photos were released of the magical creatures. And it was just like a band of very colorful, clear-eyed homeless people is what it looked like. Oh, my goodness. It was so bizarre. If they had hired the village people, it would have been more believable. Probably. And so people, there was so much backlash about it that they delayed the movie. And now they're CGIing dwarves. So it's going to be live action except for the dwarves. Because you can't put dwarves in it because Peter Dinklage said you can't. Oh, my goodness. And so it's going to be CGI. Hollywood is so ridiculous. <laughs> They're stupid. Well, here's a, here's a guy really literally that ruined seven guys' potential careers. Yeah. Right? yeah they could have gone sure. out there and said, Absolutely. hey, I got a role. I got a job. It's perfect. Mm-hmm. Maybe I can it can can move this into something else. Right. Yeah. I mean, obviously, he played a role as an elf. Yeah. Right. He was, a you know, he was a business guy in elf. Mm-hmm. It's accused of being an elf. Oh, mm-hmm. he's a grumpy elf. Right. They play off of that entire thing, which then launches his, him into a whole bunch of other movies. No, if you look correct. back at his career, he has roles that I'll pull it up. Only little people would have. Yes. yes. And very stereotypical that he would rail against today, but he got his bag. Well, it, and I thought he was really good in Game of Thrones. Now, we're, we're, I did think we're, he was good in Game of Thrones. We're railing on him a little bit, but I thought in Game of Thrones he was really good. Have you been watching House of Dragons? I have, but I have to tell you what I'm really, really, really afraid of. And I don't want to do any spoiler alerts on this if you haven't seen the first episode of season two. Um, but there was a disturbing uh, death at the end. Yes, there was. And um, I don't, I, I just hope that the rest of the season isn't like, hey, you know what? For House of Dragons 2, let's be like the boys. Let's just see how gross we can get. Right. Um, and let's just do do stuff that really just freaks everybody out. I'd rather just see adults fighting and killing each other. I really don't want to see the carnage of yeah. people just being really, really mean and abusive to all kinds of people. So, right. Yeah. He tried not to spoil it for y'all. I I'm trying not to, but I, I am, I am looking forward to it. I love the, the CGI dragons. I yes, think they're just too. super cool. There wasn't enough of those in the first episode. So I'm like, were you guys just holding the budget for the rest of it? Cause I really want, God, man. <laughs> if Tennessee catches one more ball at the warning track on the fence, I'm going to throw Amanda's computer. <laughs> Not Do, gonna it. Throw mine. Do it because the battery's dead in it. And uh, I don't want to buy a new one. So, so you can the, buy me a new one. The fossil store downtown used to have a dragon. I think it was like a, uh, it was oh, obviously yeah, like a did. makeup. It had a dragon mm-hmm. head and the skull mm-hmm. of it. I, for the longest time when I, I bought my house, I wanted to go down there, buy this dragon head and just stick it front and center. When you walk in my house, Yes, <laughs> it wouldn't make any sense in the room layout. There's really no space for it, but you just walk in and there's just this dragon skull sitting there, but it's not there anymore. So didn't Joe Rogan have like a T-Rex skull or something in his studio and then found out that it was like ill-gotten gains like he yeah, got yeah. it from an auction mm-hmm. he had got it legitimately but the auction hadn't yeah the auction hadn't got it legitimately yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> so that's what happens t-rex heads are, are not they're not like yeah. sitting on the corner no well and, and as a kid growing up right the first 
real kind of decent dragon you saw, and this is horrible, was in the Hobbit movie. Yeah. So it was the, now it wasn't yeah. your Hobbit movie. It was the animated one in the seventies. And, um, oh gosh, Richard, I'm trying to think of his last name. He was the paladin. He lived here in St. Augustine. He was the voice of, um, of smog and he was absolutely phenomenal. And it, it was just, it was just great. You're like, okay, I know it's a cartoon, but the voice carried it. Like the voice never was saw such that a Hobbit raspy voice. It, it was very campy. It was, it was not, it, it, you know, had no CGI effects. Even the cartoon effects were not, were not great. Um, but Richard Boone, thank you, Bobby. I knew an old person like me would know Bobby. Thank you very much. Um, but Richard Boone's voice was absolutely phenomenal in that. Mm -hmm. So then you get later on, they have this, uh, dragon slayer, which wasn't a great movie, but the end fight scene with the dragon was pretty cool. Really? Um, so, I mean, all of those were, were good, but then you get to, um, you know, everything that was in the Hobbit and everything that was in uh, the game of Thrones, when the dragons finally come out and you finally see the, cause the first couple seasons with the dragons, it's like watching like WNBA dragons. Like they're not real dragons, <laughs> but they're just, you know, they're little and they're tiny. And then they get, they get cooler as they get bigger. Yeah. And then you're like, and then you see how big some of the ones are in house of dragons and you go, Oh man, even those guys weren't that big. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But, and the cool, my son, Ethan brought me, um, it was a screenshot, uh, of an ice dragon in that last season and, or the second line, whatever it was. And he's like, Hey, I told you they were going to do ice dragons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When the like, white walkers take the yes, dragon. Yeah. I was like, Oh, this is so cool. I'm telling you, Florida state better start playing some baseball boys. <laughs> They're playing Tennessee. Tennessee's a tough team. Tennessee's a very good team. And so far, every time they've needed to play, they've got one. So Hats off to Tennessee. Uh, I'm a huge Florida State fan, but I'm a frustrated Florida State fan right now. And Florida won huge earlier today. Yeah, well, if you were a Florida fan, I wouldn't be doing this podcast. So, no. <laughs> I, I'm a Florida sports fan, except I, it's hard for me to root for Miami sometimes. Yeah, Miami's difficult. I, I grew up in a Georgia household, so if it was Bulldogs, Braves, Falcons, and if yep. you didn't like them, you didn't eat. So I didn't really have a choice. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, I, I love the uh, Bobby's first dragon was Puff the Magic Dragon. Bobby, we're not allowed to talk about that on air. <laughs> I mean, that's just, Troy's not here today, and Amanda yes. and Troy got in a huge argument about Puff the Magic Dragon uh, last week, so we're going to talk about that, Bobby. Leave that Troy's alone. Troy's a little sensitive. He's a My very... My favorite dragon is, uh, dragon movie is Reign of Fire. That's Reign of Fire is good. I love it. Dragon Heart was uh, one of the first ones I watched. Sean Connery is a dragon. Yes. Yes. That was another great dragon voice. Uh -huh. um, Matthew McConaughey was phenomenal. In uh, in Rain of Fire, Rain of yeah. Fire was really good. I mean, fantastic. Yeah, it's just like it's like okay, the movie's kind of bumping along. Gerard Butler's hanging in there. Christian Bale's hanging uh -huh. in there. What a cast! The though. dragons yeah. are doing okay, and then this tank rolls in. <laughs> this bald headed Matthew McConaughey is like crazy. Like yeah, we've been fighting them all the way over here. <laughs> well, let's see how you do this, and then it was really cool how they did it. And you're like okay. Yeah. I was trying to think of the name of it when he was talking and I was yeah. like, what is the name of it? But you helped me there. It, yeah. Rain, of Rain of Fire. Fire. Yeah, yeah. Such a good movie. We, we put it on for the kids and it was one of those, the kids didn't want to, they didn't want to watch it because it's an old movie and they don't want to watch it. Oh yeah. They don't want to watch the old time and then movies. And my daughter sees the hot guys and my son sees the dragons and they're like, we're in. <laughs> it was, a the cast was absolutely amazing. It was, fantastic. Yeah. It, was an, it was a great cast and you know, it was before a lot of them hit it really really big i mean they were on their way but mm -hmm. it was that was a fun one to watch even yeah. trying to show like my younger brother's generation which he's seven years younger than me i mean trying to show them movies from like the early 2000s mm -hmm. the late 90s they won't yeah. watch it yeah. they're like look at this quality i can't watch a movie like this and i'm like well the gosh. dragons actually look pretty decent in rain of fire it's 2002 they do. yeah it still holds up we watched it just a couple years ago amanda should we tell bobby what puff the magic dragon song was all really about conspiracy theory bobby conspiracy there's a theory. whole conspiracy theory buddy i hate to break this to you but it might not have been about a dragon Rewatch mine and troy's <laughs> fight last thursday and then um you can probably guess what you're puffing on that's correct and it's not a dragon no but the cgi stuff is it was for the longest time you would go to a sci-fi movie or something and you knew it was just gonna be horrible right right i remember going to star wars um it opened here on my birthday i think i was 11 and we went, my brother and I went and we're like, man, I just hope this isn't another really stupid sci-fi movie that doesn't have decent special effects. And 
See, the first 30 minutes of it is everything that you were afraid you were going to have to watch. I mean, the droids were clanky. Mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. The, the story wasn't great. You've got this old guy. you got this kid who doesn't know what he's doing. A kid, you have the one bar scene, right? And then Han Solo shoots somebody. You're like, okay, this is getting better. Right? <laughs> this is just so much better now. Han Solo saved the movie. Because it really wasn't, it wasn't that great. The movie picks up after that point. First 30 minutes, you're like, if I got to see any more robots walking through the desert, I am leaving. I am walking home from this movie. So. So was uh, Mel Brooks' Star Wars, what was it? Spaceballs. Spaceballs. Was Spaceballs more your speed? Spaceballs was hilarious. This is a great movie. Spaceballs Never seen was it. just. Oh, my word. It's oh, so great. You, Never seen you it. have got. We should put it on the wheel of destiny. <laughs> we will. Because Spaceballs is. As, it is. Um, it takes every sci-fi movie, good and bad, mm-hmm. and it pulls pieces of them and puts it into a, a, a spoof. Like a spoof that, comedy? Oh, my okay, God. Yeah, it then is I'll like so, it. so good. Rick, uh, Rick Moranis is in it. Um, who was Lone Wolf? Lone John, Star. John Lone Star. John Candy was the the wolf character in Log. it. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just a lot of really good, um, really really good characters. Who was it? You know, every, every he's, he's passed away. He was also the president in yeah. uh, Independence Day. But he had he had a doppelganger, and I can never remember. Oh, he was great in Independence Day. Yes. Yeah. He was great. Yeah. It the was new, the a, new one was not that good, but the the original Independence Day was the very second good. one wasn't that good. Bill either. Pullman. Bill Pullman. Yeah. Yes. I think it was his big break. It might have been. Because he was really young in that one. And I mean, it was, so, yeah, that was a really, really fun. I just think it's hilarious that Mel Brooks went to George Lucas and he was like, hey, so I'm going to do this like Star Wars spoof. Are you going to sue me? And he was like, are you planning on selling merchandise and action figures? And he's like, no. And he's like, <laughs> as long as you don't sell action figures, you can do it. And he's like, deal. <laughs> That's awesome. So that becomes a running joke throughout the movie. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it was a. I thought that was really. They don't really make good comedies anymore. Like no. everything's so touchy now. Well, I think some of that. You're saying. I don't know if you watched Bill. Uh, Bill Burr was in L.A. Mm-hmm. about a weekend. It was either last weekend or the weekend before, and somebody started heckling him, and he just went off on them. Really? I mean, just I haven't seen it. Destroyed the person, and then went off about I hate liberals. They've ruined comedy. Blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Right? And it was just. It's like, oh my gosh. I mean, somebody that a comedian finally had enough of this and said, yeah. we're done. His right? Netflix comedy, Old Dogs, is good. It's it's pretty funny. I don't know mm-hmm. if you've seen is it. Is that the Red Rocks one? I watched the Red Rocks special that came out. Not no, no, it's, a, it's an actual movie. Oh, okay. So he put out a movie called Old right. Dogs, and it's about him being a dad, and his wife wants to send their kid to a private school, and the teacher's like very inclusive and liberal, mm-hmm. and he's just, want, he's just an old an older business owner that doesn't want to lose his business. Yeah. And he's just fed up with all the woke stuff. <laughs> and it's a hilarious, it re- has that old comedy feel. Yeah. And it's, it's really, really good. But the reason I brought up the comedy thing was because every election year, my brother and I have a tradition where we, where we rewatch the campaign, which I think is the best political comedy if, of my generation. It, it is hilarious. Uh, who is it? It's, it's Will, Zach, Fer- Will Zach- Ferrell and Zach Galifianakis. Yes. Yeah, there are parts of that movie that I thought were really funny, and there are parts of it I'm just like that. This is just that over the top Will Ferrell. They do have what, the over the top spot, but that's Will, Will Ferrell's. That's, that's his, his mo. Stick, though, yeah, right? that's, that's his, his mo. Like, yeah. Hey, we're gonna take it to here, and then we're just gonna go so far over the top. You're like, okay, we can't do that. And then you watch in the outtakes, and you're like, why didn't you put that in? Because the out, I mean, the outtakes are yeah, are hilarious. Yeah, yes. the outtakes from um, Talladega Nights. I, oh. I laugh. So hard during the movie, but then the outtakes were yeah. Step Brothers, same thing. Yes, yeah. There's so many quotable things. There is, there is. They just don't make comedy like that anymore. It's so I sad. I don't love the movie Anchorman, but the lines in Anchorman. There's so many quotable lines in. Anchorman. I, I agree with you on that. I don't love the movie either, but there are quotable lines. See, I loved Anchorman. Yeah, I mean, for the quotable lines and just how silly mm-hmm. and stupid the whole. It just, it, it really, one of the things is uh, women were not treated well in that, uh, that workforce no. for the in longest that industry, time yeah. in that industry. And it's just, and you looked at that and you said, they have completely made fun of all the men that were holding all the women back. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it just really spoofed every bit of that. And so for me, I kind of laughed at that as well because mm-hmm. the smartest people in the show were the, were the two women. Christina Applegate was phenomenal in that, yeah. in that role. And Will Ferrell just played this over-the-top jerk 
to perfection. Which is what he does yeah. really well. He yes. always does the over the top roles very, very well. Yeah. He's just so method. You know what that movie was supposed to be about? That wasn't supposed to be the movie at all. What was it? It was movie? supposed to be a bunch of anchor men going overseas to like it was I mean, they've kind of made it an interview, sort of. Yeah. And so like if you take Tropic Thunder and the movie interview, that's pretty much what interview um Anchorman was supposed to be about. So they were supposed to be going to interview a dictator. I think it was one of the Kims in North Korea, but it might have been Russia, I'm not sure. And the plane goes down and they have to survive the jungle. And that was the original script for the movie. How do you know so much about the back end news in Hollywood? Watch way too many videos. <laughs> way too many videos. That's interesting. So I'm going to tell you the movie ended up 10,000 times oh, better yeah. than yeah. what they what, they what that did. sounds oh, yeah. like. Yeah. yeah. But Paul Rudd talks about it in an interview about like, it's not the movie that I signed up to do, but it's so much better than what it was going to uh, be. <laughs> no, that was, a, that would have been a horrible movie. And actually, oh, yeah. the other thing, Maybe James Franco got there first. Right? <laughs> James Franco and Seth Rogen beat them to the interview, right? Because they, they yeah. had the whole, I think they had uh, contracts out on them for a while. Dude, that was a good movie. I didn't see that one. You never saw the interview? I never saw the interview. It, you know, it didn't come out in theaters for a reason, yeah, right? Blackballed. Yeah, it was blackballed. Yeah. yeah. But I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, my husband watched it. I had a newborn, and so I was... I wasn't, I didn't watch it, but Tropic Thunder is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Tropic Thunder is hilarious. Well, and there's Classic. a lot of people say today you couldn't do like Mel Brooks. You couldn't do today. Tropic Thunder. You couldn't do today. No, there's yeah. no, no way there's no you way. could do a Tropic Thunder today. Ben Stiller's. No, it was, um, Robert, Robert Downey, Downey Jr. Jr.'s role, yeah. but you never yeah. could have. Gone. Well, Ben Stiller couldn't even do his role. No, he couldn't do his role because either. Because he, he did that. Oscar simple, bait movie. Simple Jack. Yeah. yeah, Simple Jack. And the the language people use to discuss that with him is not something they does not done fly today. in today's world. I think I understand what you're talking about. Yeah. I have only seen bits and pieces, but yeah. <laughs> no, Blaze, uh, Blazing Saddles, Bobby, uh, is one of the funniest movies of all time. Could not be made today. No. Never you seen could it. never hit a horse like Alex. You've never seen Blazing horse. Saddles? No, I have never seen Blazing Saddles. So I don't even two, know what it is. That's it, two on your watch list. Yeah, I'm ready. Spaceballs and Blazing Both Saddles. Are Mel Brooks Both movies. are Mel Brooks. <laughs> now, while you're going there, just go for the trifecta, right? And Young Frankenstein. Okay. Young that's Frankenstein. That's not my favorite, but oh, it's good. Young Frankenstein. It is so much good stuff. The name of the movie, movie is Young Frankenstein? Yeah. Okay. Yes. It's It's... Frankenstein. <laughs> my, my girlfriend and I need movies to watch, so this yeah. is perfect. Uh, those three. Is she easily okay. offended? Because if she is, she's not easily not offended. No, no, no. She's dating, she's dating Levi. How could she be easily? offended? She definitely can't be Sometimes easily offended if she's dating me. Uh, uh, I know you're not easily offended. That's why you put up with me for a year and a half. <laughs> Aren't I usually the one that says <laughs> things that get you in trouble? Most of the time, yes. <laughs> but that just proves I'm not easily offended either. It proves that your wife watches more than my husband. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I always come home. I was right there with you until so-and-so said this. And 90% of the time, I'm the so-and-so. Is that why she stopped returning my text? <laughs> uh, maybe. It might be maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. So switching to leaving Hollywood, going to TV. Mm -hmm. So there's this kind of little watch show it's not anywhere near as popular as that show that's on in the morning mm -hmm. uh, but they do have an ensemble uh, cast and it's uh, the view yeah. rachel maddow sat in this this week there's less facial hair on on the show that's on in the morning there is yes the show you're there talking is about. yes and fitness reigns supreme on that show that's on in the morning <laughs> yeah and happiness mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh she made this comment that if trump were to win the presidency the view would be canceled and her show would be canceled. Oh no. And I went, oh my God, suddenly millions of people <laughs> screamed out in joy. Zero <laughs> value like, lost. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what are we going to not talk about when you, no, it, I, I saw that and I thought this is the craziest thing that you think that you're that important. Yeah. That if somebody were to get elected, the first thing they do is get rid of you. Yeah. You're fine. You well, their networks are dying anyways. They're, they're all, I think, uh, what was it? Um, the Daily Beast L laid off like 30% of their, 40% of their workforce uh, this past week. They keep firing people. I mean, it, it's it's been, Donald Trump saved a lot of media companies that were going to go down the tank mm -hmm. in 2020. But because they kept all this Russian crap going and all this stuff, the, the hate Trump, 
their ratings and subscriberships went through the roof. And as soon as Trump was out of office, it has been a four year downward spiral that I don't think they're recovering from. It was sort of a media bubble. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was sort of a hiring craze because they had all these eyeballs because there was a huge audience that hated Trump. And then you had on the opposite side, a huge audience of people that wanted to hear positive things about Trump. Yep. So he increased ratings on both sides, but uh, there's only so long you can, you can feed that hate before people just tune out, especially with the way things are going now. And to show CNN's market value, they tried to do a streaming service, <laughs> which they lost <laughs> millions and millions of dollars on. Oh, it lasted yeah. all of three months. CNN I don't think it was. lasted three months. It, did, it, it might not have made it three months. It might yeah. not have made it 90 days. But How long did CNN Plus last? I tell yeah. you who got an award for biggest loser was Chris Wallace on that. <laughs> He left he Fox left to Fox. go there. Yeah, he did. And it wasn't like he was beloved on Fox, right? I mean, if you were a, a conservative, Chris Wallace after the debate uh, of 2020 was like your least favorite guy. Yeah, for sure. It, it was like, show us your bias. No, no, Dang. show us your real bias. It was, I think it was less than a month. Yeah, it launched March 29th, 2022, and it closed April 28th, 2022. Less than a month. <laughs> less than a month. Wow. Yes. Dude. Yeah, I mean, if it wasn't for sporting events and... New Coke lasted longer than that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Clear it, Pepsi lasted longer than that. <laughs> yeah, if it wasn't for the sports TV contracts, regular cable television still wouldn't be around. I, I Listen, I, I completely agree, and I think it's all going... There's no content anymore. There's none. Right, there's, there's nothing really that's a decent show. I know there's a lot of people trying to stream. Disney lost their shirt trying to do a bunch of streaming stuff because they did a bunch... They got into a bunch of expensive... Um, uh, things and you know e even Netflix and that some of, a lot of the stuff that they come out is like that's it that's all you guys yeah. got well what you're going to see now with the streaming services is exactly what happened in cable television they're all going to pair up together and yeah. then they're going to sell their services together and then we're just going to have yeah. cable TV on the internet <laughs> it's going to be cable plans with more steps that's yeah, what's going to happen exactly I don't, I, I don't know that it recovers I, I'm honestly hoping that one of the coolest things that is that people just unplug Mm -hmm. And said, we're just going to go outside. We're going to go do I would things, love, right? I would get, love that. I mean, we're going to go. This the touch grass meme. <laughs> this is me maybe being on Puff the Magic Dragon for just a second. But, um, <laughs> but I would just love if we just said, you know what? We don't need this stuff. And you know, there was a time when everybody would come to work and talk about what was on TV. Right. I mean, the Thursday night, you would come in and talk about what was on NBC Thursday yeah. night. And, and when Seinfeld was on or L.A. Law or all these different shows. Water cooler shows. You, you Survivor. Come in, yeah, yeah. You come in and talk. Now it's like you're afraid to mention any of these shows because you might alienate half your worker friends. Right. You're like, I, yeah, I can't tell them I watch that show. I don't even think people talk to each other in the workplace anymore. <laughs> No, they text mm -hmm. each other yeah. and email each other. Well, fewer and fewer people actually have a workplace to go to. More people are working from home these they days, are. too. They are. I can't talk. I work from home. So yeah, I do, too. I work from home and I work out of it. I work from my office and I'm glad I have my office. <laughs> you know, I thought about just renting a location to where I could just get out of my house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like I would do more focused work. So there's a lot. I get more distracted. I had a, uh, several opportunities in the early 2020s to stay at home for two weeks. And so I got to see how it was working at home or not. And uh, the person that I drove nuts was Darcy because I would <laughs> spread out all my stuff over the dining room table and the kitchen table. And she's like, we're going to have lunch. You got to <laughs> this clean this up. Right? <laughs> Dinner is in 30 minutes. You got to stop going to work because I can leave that stuff at, at work. Right. If I walk out of the, the office and it's a mess, it's no big deal. It's not a, it's not a thing, but at home, I can't do that. Yeah, I, I was forced to turn the garage into my workspace. So I brought, I got a an AC unit that I put in the garage. I've nice. got my, my laptop and my computer mm -hmm. set up in there now. And I kind of had to move from the dining room table once my girlfriend moved in. Yes. Yeah. You, they do that to you. Yes, that happens. And I no oh, longer have come closet on, space. Amanda, you know you forced Louie to make changes. No closet space? My walk-in closet's not mine anymore. We bought a house that has two walk-in closets. Nice. So, so where does Louie put one his... and he has No, one. no, where does he put his stuff? Honestly, you've got both of them. No, I don't. Oh, uh, I don't believe I that. don't even... I barely walk into his I closet. I have a dresser in the corner. I have a dresser in a corner and one nightstand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's where I have consolidated to. In your house. In my house, that's correct. <laughs> well, I, when Darcy and I got married, we, we moved into a house and it had three bedrooms, three small closets, right? The master closet was 
double the size of the other two. And so I kind of figured, well, we'll be half and half shortly. I mean, very <laughs> shortly. Same. I was in one of the spare bedroom closets with some of my <laughs> stuff, not all my stuff, but just some of my stuff is like, okay, I'm going to pare this down to just a little less stuff. In there. So yeah. yeah. That's how it works. I'm still not believing that Louis has his own closet. He does. Happy wife, happy life. Does, you can, are you, are you counting him? the garage as a walk-in closet? Nope. Just for clarification. <laughs> nope. I just want to make sure it's not a standalone rack in the I garage. I will call him right now walk -in and interrupt closet. his movie. <laughs> <laughs> he has his own walk-in closet. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, my gosh. Andy, Andy needs to work from home. His staff would love it. I said then you would be in his kitchen. <laughs> yes, I would. Be awesome. Uh, Mike goes, that's funny. Yeah, listen, I come home. I, it's, I'm the worst one. Like my office, when I get working on projects, I have uh -huh. stuff spread everywhere. Yeah. And, I'm, and then somebody interrupt me and then I got to start spreading out another project and I have like four things open at one time. Uh -huh. I know where everything is and it bothers even me. But when I do it at home, it's like, Darcy will go off somewhere. I'm like, hey, I got to pay the bills or do this. And she comes home. I'm like, it's give me 30 minutes. I'll clean all this up. Right? I just, <laughs> give so me 30 Because I have to spread this stuff out. I can't. Yeah. I don't work off of the computer. Um, I like paper. I do the same thing. I bought mm -hmm. like a six pack of those little TV dinner tables. Yeah. And I have notepads on each one. One's yeah. by my bed. One's by the couch. One's by the dining room table. Yeah. And I just walk around and I just sit at different. Each notepad <laughs> has its own purpose. Yeah. But. It's spread out throughout the house, and she, I come home, and she's like, what is this? <laughs> I'm like, sorry. This is my system. Sorry, this is my system. Yeah, exactly. Just don't move the notepads. Yeah. <laughs> this is where I have my thoughts that I have to get out. So there, here's, it says, we're talking about relationships and stuff at home. There was a, uh, I watched a little kind of video clip this morning, and it was a wife saying that for years, her husband drove her nuts by leaving an empty glass next to the sink. And not mm -hmm. putting it in the dishwasher. Oh, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> and just how aggravating this was. Mm -hmm. But then one weekend, her husband was gone. And she had a glass that was empty. And she set it next to the, the sink. And she said, you know, instead of putting it in the dishwasher, I'll leave it here in case I need a glass later. And then I'll just use the same glass mm -hmm. again. And she went, oh, my God. That's what he's been trying to do all these years. She discovered empathy. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you either get yelled at because you use too many glasses, right? Where are all these glasses? Well, I keep putting them in the dishwasher. Or can I leave one out and that's my glass? So, yeah. I have three kids in my house. I wouldn't notice how many glasses my husband <laughs> uses because we had to rein in the number that the kids use because yeah. it would be 15. If we didn't keep them contained it would be 15 glasses so you got to issue everyone a yeti cup not a <laughs> yeah. stanley i'm against the stanley I'm against crowd stanley's as well yeah. why are you against the stanley crowd because my girlfriend has 19 <laughs> colors and she always has to buy the new color that comes out and i go in my cabinet space and there's no room for anything except stanley's i'm going to tell you a secret that i saw two houses we were traveling this past year mm -hmm. an entire drawer that's mm -hmm. just filled with the lids, right? So you don't match them up. You put all the lids in the drawer and both couples we stayed with literally had 30 Yetis each <laughs> and it's all these different sizes and, and you like open the drawer and there's all the lids. And I'm like, that's really smart. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm anti Stanley cup. My daughter got hooked on the Stanley cup craze. Like all the teenage girls did last yep, year. Yep. And that's what she wanted for Christmas. And I, it was a whole thing. And so I had everyone seen it that's been on the show. My big, giant, plastic, like, cooler jug that I've had. A half-gallon jug. And it died this weekend. Somebody was helping me at a swim meet and knocked it over. My metal straw punctured the inside of it. It's dead. It's covered with all my stickers. I'm devastated. So my <laughs> daughter, my daughter, of course, looks at me and she's like, would you like to use this Stanley? Oh, <laughs> no, I would not. So I intentionally did not buy a Stanley. <laughs> what did you I buy? I like it. It's um, I found it on Amazon. It's half gallon. It's got a handle. Nice. That's what I got. Nice. It's off brand something. So you went to off brand Amazon.com. Uh huh. Was like it overstocked it. too? Just asking. I don't know. Mm -mm. I, that's not my business. Do you have a favorite mug? Mm -hmm. I mean, is that your, so you, you, yours broke. So you have a fit that you always have to have with I you. I always have this, yeah. this my tea, I have this and I had my water jug and those two things were always with me and my water jug died and I'm so sad. 
So I had a, <laughs> it was by Thermos that also makes those, those kind of cups. And then it was an Eddie Bauer mug. It was, I bet it's 20 some years old. And that is my favorite one. The problem is now all the paint is coming off of it. And I have no idea what Chinese paint was on it. <laughs> so I actually, I've got to like clean it all the way down. Yeah. I, I had that mug for forever. I lost the lid eight years in and I just yeah. did. I refused to put a lid on it. I just went without a lid for like, don't you ever spill that? I'm like, no, I never spilled this. And I did, it was just like the best cup of all time. Mm-hmm. I still have it. He's going to pull it out and he's got to make sure I peel the paint off before I start drinking <laughs> Lead paint chips. I have no idea what's in the paint. I have no idea where it's from. I've had so. this one since I think uh, 2014, mm-hmm. and it's starting to flake and peel a little bit. But I will not be replacing it with the Stanley. Barbara, I can't do it. Barbara Jean wants to know why you didn't order her a purple mug. I can send you the link, Barbara Jean. It's purple, um, it, but it's also iridescent, so it's got all kinds of colors. Like yeah, it's it. like a chameleon color. Yeah, I like it. I couldn't tell what color it was. Mm. Because it's for all a, the colors. For a second, I thought I was still on Puff the Magic Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to run that joke the entire way through the show just for Bobby. Right. I like it. Just for <laughs> Bobby. All right, so um, NBA finished their season. They did. Comments. You're a young ex-baller. Yep. So any comments on the NBA season? People year? aren't going to like my comments. Um, I think that the Celtics stole a championship. Mm-hmm. I don't. I do think they were the best team the entire season, but they had not proven themselves in the playoffs up to this point. Um, then this playoffs came around, and they played a whole bunch of hurt teams. Every single superstar in the East was hurt, mm-hmm. and I think Jason Tatum is a great player. Do I think he's three hundred and fifteen million biggest NBA contract of all time worthy player? No, um, he didn't even win MVP of the finals. Uh, he actually recorded two, two of the top five worst plus minuses this series Mm -hmm. in this one series two for the NBA finals worst in NBA finals history. Um, And he's going to get paid the biggest contract in NBA history. So Reese, who is a big, big NBA fan, uh, this, the playoff start. And he said, it's over. I sort of mean, so the Celtics are winning. They're walking their way to this championship. They did. He said, this will be their 18th championship and it will be the easiest one they've ever got. A hundred percent. He's correct. Yes. And Amanda, how many goals did Jason Tatum score in the last game? 69. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that would be 200 points. He did not have... You have to understand, I was meaning hockey goals for her. So Amanda does zero sports. That was the biggest change when when um, Amanda and I started doing a show together and all this sports stuff I would talk about. And it took like one that's show Mike to go. Yeah, I yeah, gotta get, all that's got to go. He's like, sports again. I see it written down over here. Oh, He's no, got sports, sports written down. He's like, yes. yes. He's had the shakes for two years. Yeah, he can't I, I mean, anymore. listen, you can't, if you win an NBA title, it's impressive, right? You've, mm-hmm. you've got to play an 82 game season. You got to make sure your superstars don't get hurt. You've got to yep. win a seven game series, m- multiple of them to get there. So they did win a championship. Now, I think they played the, the, probably the fifth best team in the West. I think that the Mavs played really well, but got there by a fluke. Um, I think that Minnesota was better than them. I think that Denver Nuggets were better than them. I think that the Lakers were better than them. Um, and, you know, the Celtics got the luck of the draw. But if the Celtics win another one in the next three years, I'll give them their flowers. Until okay. then, they don't get flowers from me. No, you want them actually to have to go to a couple of game sevens and earn it. I want them to have to beat Joel Embiid. I want them to have to beat, um, you know, the... Uh, I want them to have to beat a, a young, healthy Orlando. Mm-hmm. Like, Orlando looks deadly. Um so I want them to have to beat a Pacers that doesn't have a hurt Halliburton. I want them, who else is in the East that's good? The Milwaukee Bucks. Giannis didn't even play. Like, you know, they've got to earn it. Yeah. Well, it, it'll be interesting to watch them defend. I do think they have an incredibly stacked team. They do. They do. I, I think their, their talent level is unreal. I was happy for Al Horford. Yeah, I was happy for Al Horford as well. I, I mean, Al I did Horford, leave that part out. Yeah, Florida, Florida basketball player, two NCAA championships, just a hardworking, great, Guy. He just he just plays. He's just a great guy. Yeah. yeah, you don't watch him do a lot of crazy stuff. Just a really really good guy. And so for me, I was happy he. He'll got probably it. retire after this year. Uh, he's thirty eight. Yeah. Well, LeBron's 40, 30, 38 and still years old doing. and still still running up and down with all these yeah. young guys. I mean, that's very very impressive. That is. Now, LeBron's was, an outlier. We can't talk about LeBron. He's. I, mean, I was thirty eight playing in a city league and I knew how much it hurt. And that was yeah. only twice a week for. Six weeks. I'm 33 playing in a city league, and I can tell you how much it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> the, 
But the, we don't. But we don't have an ice bath, a masseuse. We don't have the diet. We don't have all these other training well, coaches. I, I did. I took a deep freezer and built a cold plunge in my house. You like it? I do. I love it. I use it every morning. So I think the cold plunge is is one of the coolest things. We have a sauna, and then I have a buddy that has a cold plunge, and I I will go use that occasionally. Um, I love the sauna, um, but the cold plunge after exercising is just a phenomenal way to get your core temperature back down and then kind of get rid of some of that inflammation. You know that the cold plunge after exercising actually hurts the gains you make in the gym? Really? It does. So uh, this is a Japanese study. Um, they did cold plunging. They looked at a thousand people that did mm -hmm. cold plunging after exercise and a thousand individuals that did it before exercise. What they found that if you cold plunge before you exercise, it shoots your dopamine levels up 2,500% and boosts your testosterone almost tenfold while you're lifting. So if you're looking to keep your gains after exercising, do not cold plunge directly after. Now, if you're an athlete in season and you want to keep inflammation out of your body, then cold plunging after exercise is good. In my cold plunge, we'll go swim and then I jump in the, in the cold plunge. But when we're swimming in January and February, I don't need the cold plunge. Right, the right, water right. temp is in the 60s and you spend 30 minutes in there and you go, okay, I'm good. To go. But yes, cold plunging after the gym will, if you're lifting and you're looking to gain muscle, will hurt you. Okay. Yes. A little fun fact for you guys. That's a I'm, good one. I'm big on the biohacking. I do all the grounding, the breath work, the cold plunging, the sauna. So how long do you ground for? 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Every morning. Okay. First thing I do when I wake up is I go outside and I touch grass. Mm -hmm. and I'll sit in a chair out in the grass and I'll do breath work. Okay. And I'll do 30 rounds of 30 breaths where I get as much air in as possible and then force it all out as quick as possible. Are you, are you on to the hydrogen hack? I have hydrogen water bottle. Do yes. I think it works. I don't know if it's a placebo effect because they've shown that placebo effects do work if you believe it's working. Yes. So it could be, but I do like my hydrogen water, yes. Well, and that's why, because I don't know if you remember the magnetic bands they had for a while. Yeah, yeah. the yeah that company got sued. And, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, it's like people, like, I had one, and they're like, does it really help you? I said, well, I haven't fallen since I've been wearing it. Yeah. But I said, honestly, I didn't fall before I wore it either. So, I mean. It's, <laughs> yeah, the balance like, bands, I remember yeah. those. Yeah. No, but I, I, I think some of this stuff, you're like, you're like, that doesn't work. And you can kind of look at that. The hydrogen water, I'm not sure works. Well, the grounding definitely works. You can yeah. actually test it. You can mm -hmm. take a, a tester and test it. Um, and the cold plunge definitely works as well. Well, I think the grounding is is a fairly obvious one. Mm -hmm. We were meant to be in contact with the environment. Yeah, correct. And, and we have put all of this concrete and steel and shoes and people don't go outside anymore. And so for me, that's a fairly obvious one. I'm like, yeah, I can check that box. I don't need any studies. I can tell you you're better off if you're just outside. I had a doctor it. recommend grounding. Mm -hmm. He actually yeah. recommended because I have chronic inflammation to get um, grounded sheets they sell. Yeah, they sell and those. And that way you're you're grounded for, you know, however long you're in bed. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you know, if you are willing to do it and can afford the sheets, they're not cheap sheets, then he's like, that would, I think that would help you. <laughs> mm -hmm. two, in my opinion, two of the best things you can do is you ground in the morning and get morning sunlight. Yeah. Even if it's just five to 10 minutes, mm -hmm. it just helps your circadian rhythm. It helps the body wake up. It's just the natural way to wake up. And I have a better mood throughout the day. I, I, if I, you know, if I'm up North or something and I can't get sunlight or I'm inside, I almost feel like grumpier, like easily yeah. triggered throughout the day versus when I'm, you know, living in a warm climate area where I can get sunlight every morning. Yeah. I, I am. I have said for the longest time, I am solar powered. <laughs> I, I learn it, like summertime. I can stay up. I can sleep less. I just feel like I have more energy. You get to December, and an hour and a half after the sun has gone down, which is five thirty, oh, I'm ready it. for bed. Right? I'm it. like, I'm going to bed. And I don't. If you sit me on the couch to watch something on TV, I'll be asleep in twenty minutes. I just, I'm out. You take mm -hmm. that sunlight out of my system, uh, especially that light. You put me in the middle of of. Uh, Alaska or someplace like that, I'd be toast. I'd be yeah, same, toast. same. All right, I am like really getting mad now because it's the top of the seventh, and Florida State has given up another run. We got a runner on third base. Mm. There's two outs. Uh, is this an elimination game? Yes. Yeah, Florida State has to beat Tennessee twice, and right now it doesn't look like we can score against Tennessee, and so we only have we got six outs, nine outs left. So we got we got hope, and we're one of the best hitting teams. So we just have to hope we get to the right. The right guy. So. It's looking like a GG, Mike. Uh, what's a GG? Good game. Oh, that's, that's that's some millennial uh, terminology for you. GG, good game. Game over. 
We should have hooked up your computer to the HDMI so that everyone could see what you're watching. No, we're not allowed to do that. That would get us in May. The 904 Now Network would be incredibly. I could uh, do picture in picture. Yeah. As long as it's small enough with an overlay, it's fine. Look, you know ways to work around it. I got to get you on our stream to set us up so we can watch NBA games. Yeah. So um, now I, I think I said you, you're going to come sit in on Wednesdays with us. Yes, I'm so, going to come sit in as much as I can. Yes. So we will have uh, young people on the network, which is groundbreaking. I know Blake is our youngest producer, but we have a young co-host. I appreciate you guys letting me come on as well. It's, it's great having you in. Thanks, y'all. Yeah, we um, like having I mean, it, it's it's really good. And uh, if you want to sit in one day on a Tuesday movie review, you just have to let us. I know. would love that. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if I can keep watching these 1980s throwback movies. <laughs> we might 30th, have to. Uh, July 30th is our day. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, July 30th. I'm actually going to uh, Mexico tomorrow. Ooh. What's in Mexico? Um, so a friend of mine, he uh, actually played basketball at Flagler College. Yep. He is getting married. Oh. And so his bachelor party, all he wanted to do was go a deep sea fishing charter mm-hmm. off the Mexican coast. Okay. So we are flying into Cancun, mm-hmm. driving down to Tulum, and we are doing two days of a fishing charter out there. You guys will have a blast. We're trolling for marlin. We're mm-hmm. going fishing for snapper. We're going snorkeling on the reef. It's nice. going to be, it's going to be exciting. I love Mexico. I've been there a couple of times. Yeah. Well, if you get pictures, you have to bring them back next week. I will. Yeah, I will. We, we bring bring back some pictures, you know, just the fishing stuff. First time yeah. I just ever did cold stuff. plunge yeah. was in Cancun, Mexico. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm so addicted to my cold plunge <laughs> that I was tasked with finding the Airbnb. I yeah. got one that has a cold plunge. <laughs> and I didn't tell them that was the reason we got the more expensive Airbnb. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's definitely the reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, Susan Johnson says she likes the grounding and cold plunge info and would like you to bring more tips next week. Okay, I will do that, Susan. So I guess uh, Levi's not only our young podcast co-host, mm-hmm. he's also our health co-host. Yeah. I good. am. I'm very big into the biohacking um, side of things. So I will definitely do, do the research and bring you valuable information that is free. <laughs> and, and we need valuable information here. This Florida State game is going to kill me. It's been such a good season. Isn't it crazy how riled up men get over sports? I'm, like, I'm the same way. I'm the same we're just way. Trying to work here. We're just trying to have a conversation. I'm trying to work too, and the Knolls are not helping. It actually, I mean, it's been kind of well. At least in this one, the NCAA let us participate. <laughs> So we at least have that going. For yeah. Us. Not I mean, salty at all. No. <laughs> what did you think about that? Have you guys talked about that on this show? We did it because Amanda doesn't know why we the We talked about it a little bit. Did we? Yeah. yeah. I, it's, what did you have to Because it was a controversy. So I know about controversies. Alabama, <laughs> based yeah. on how that the college selection committee has run it for however many years they've had it, mm-hmm. Alabama and Texas should not have been there. It should yeah. have been Georgia and it should have been FSU. Yeah. You can't leave an undefeated team out. Yeah, I thought... Especially I th- out of a Power 5 conference. You can't do that. I did not like the way they did that, and I thought now, FSU should be there. do I think Florida State would have won? No, they were injured beyond yeah. all get out, but they... They deserve to go. They deserve yeah. to go. They deserve they to have a chance. Spot. Well, I thought, too, the other is uh, Nick Saban gets in, gets beat, and then retires. Yeah. Too. Right, yeah. so you just call him and go, hey, I, one more time, and then I'm yeah. out. And that, like, okay, there, Nick, I don't know if that's exactly what happened, but there's definitely some inside stuff that happens. Home run! <laughs> they got one run. Let's go. It was a solo shot. Now we're cooking, baby. I can feel momentum shifting. My word. We only need six more runs. You know, they, they robbed us last time. We had a six-run lead and gave it up. So it would be you, you it would be justice if we got them back this time. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. The Dodgers scored seven runs in the ninth last night to come back to win. Yeah. The, well, they the played. The Dodgers did something good? Yeah. No, they, they did not. <laughs> well, the Dodgers did not. Is, just, sorry about Mike's hatred for them. They're one of the best teams in baseball this year. They are. You one should of the have best seen teams. his hatred for the movie last night. Oh, yes. my word. <laughs> they, uh, they scored seven runs in the ninth inning and won the game. Wow. Mm-hmm. But they were playing the Rockies, Mile High Stadium. So with hitting like the Dodgers, you can easily. The, the Dodgers are a loaded team. The Braves were a loaded team. They are flat out struggling right now with the injuries. They are struggling with the injuries. I'm a huge Braves fan. They won 7 nothing today. But they played the Detroit Tigers. So but look, we Detroit we, sports have it rough. Well, you know where we're going next. Yankees are next. Okay. We got we got to go to New York for a three-game series. So I'm like, if we get one, I'm going to be thrilled to death. 
Yeah, the Yankees are the best team in baseball. Mm -hmm. Dang it. Yeah. <laughs> so the Celtics are going to win this year. The Yankees are going to win this year. The Yankees aren't uh, going to win this year. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> they couldn't beat the Red Sox. They uh, dropped two to the Red Sox in a row. I know. Is Look it at Boston's all the Yankees here? fans chiming in. Oh, are there Yankees fans in here? Come on. Oh, yeah. There, there are lots of Yankee fans. I grew up a Braves fan, but I was in New York on Long Island during the Subway Series. And so everyone on campus was, they were either Mets or Yankees. And it was, and I'm just sitting here like, go Braves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm a Braves fan. We used to go to the spring training games at Disney when I was yeah. a kid. But I, I can imagine both the Mets and the Yankees fans asking you what the minor leagues were like. They're just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -mm. No. I, see, I see you got WNBA on your board. What do you? I, I just wrote it down. I was just Are we curious. talking Caitlin Clark? Well, I was just curious if you had comments on it. Um, my kind of comment is no one knew the league was there until she got there. Correct. <laughs> and then people would have forgotten about the league except for all of the BS that's going on. Um, and I think some of it is, okay, we're rolling now. They now are. we're rolling, Another solo baby. shot. That's another solo shot. We just need five more. That's back-to-back, -back, right? Yeah, that's back-to-back -back homers. Yep. <laughs> yep, we're rolling now. If I, Only one out? Uh, yeah, one, one out. out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We need a couple more runs if you here. Get, if you can get two more runs this inning, how many innings? Did they play nine innings in college? Nine innings. Okay. Nine innings, yeah, yep. if you can get a couple more runs, yeah. you'll be back in it. Yeah, I, look, I, yeah, bring some guy out who's got a tired arm. If anybody yeah. can choke, it's the Tennessee Volunteers. Yeah, for sure. Just ask Peyton Manning. <laughs> but no, yeah, WNBA. So um, my thoughts on it. Uh, Caitlin Clark has obviously brought great recognition to the sport. Um, everything is up hundreds of percent of their merchandise, their NBA, their WNBA app purchases, their viewership. It, it, their, anything you can think of is is up. And their projections came out and they're still going to lose 50 million this year. Well, there was a funny, um, uh, guy did some math. Imagine that Amanda math. And, um, <laughs> so he, they took the loss of the WNBA mm -hmm. and the WNBA players said, we want revenue sharing. Right. And they said, okay, what we're going to do is divide the number of players into the loss. And each one of you, after you're paid, owes us $177,000. Yeah, exactly. And that's what the loss per player was last year. Well, look, Basketball is a sport that already struggles with viewership in America, mm -hmm. and it's a made to be a pl played above the rim as an, an exciting sport. Mm -hmm. And that's just how the game is designed. It's not nothing against women. That's just how the game's designed. Just like volleyball is played above the net, and in women's volleyball, they're up there spiking it down on each yeah. other. Um, I saw a woman. Do it. So, I saw yeah, a film and one, I, her ups. Yeah, were, I, I bet she had a. 48 inch vertical leap. I mean, it was sick watching how it was. I was like, Oh my gosh. And so if you look at the viewership of the WNBA, I bet you, if you took their demographic, it's probably not even women watching. It's not, it's not. Bill Burr has a joke about that. Yeah. It's men that are watching it. Yeah. So, um, you know, the WNBA is, is a necessity for the league, I think for the NBA, but they got to stop with all this. We need more money. They're flying on private jets now, and that's all because of Caitlin Clark. So, I, look, I, I think it's going to be interesting to watch what happens. Um, I'm watching if this industry is smart and learns to build off of her and some of the new interest, or you have some dummies that that kill the guy. I mean, like if she gets injured or she can't play and viewership tanks, you know, you, you kind of look at some of that stuff and you go, you're going to get exactly what you asked for. You're going to be back into no one knows who you are and nobody knows what's going on and there, you won't be getting shoe deals and all this other well, stuff. Well, as a chick, we try and, we're trying to get away from this impression that girls are catty backstabbers that don't help, that don't help each other succeed and always tear down their other people's success and that's exactly what's happening like caitlin clark goes in there amazing and all these other women are just like that bitch and they're trying to tear her down like stop being a stereotype just stop being a stereotype yeah there's a it's way to, there's a way to Remember go about the it woman on this show said that <laughs> <laughs> levi and i had nothing, nothing to, to do say with on it. that subject <laughs> they, but, there, but there's a way to handle it with the media i can see how getting asked a question after every game about caitlin clark can huh. get annoying what you would say or this is pr training for WNBA. Mm -hmm. you would say you know what 
we appreciate what she's done for the sport, but I believe that I'm the best player in, in, in the league, and I'm going to prove that. Well, you so, could do a Daniel Radcliffe. So Daniel Radcliffe had this strategy where he didn't want paparazzi following him all the time. So he just wore the exact same outfit every day for like six months. And so the paparazzi couldn't use the photos because they looked like <laughs> they were all shot in the same day. So they couldn't sell that's, any that's pictures genius. of him. So they stopped hanging out outside back, of his apartment. Back to Hollywood so with her. <laughs> if you... If you just gave the same answer, she's a skilled player. We have amazing players on our team. Yeah. If you just gave that answer, every time someone asked a question they about her, asking. they'd stop asking because it's not interesting. Yeah. But by being catty and being bitchy about it, then everyone's going to yeah. keep asking you the because views it sells. Go like this. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Because if you give the catty answer, you're on sports center. You exactly. are. You are. Yep. A hundred percent. But Does then it? you get asked again. And then you get asked again and then you got to answer it again. It's yep. just beating the beast. Yeah. All right. We are out of time. Way past. We, we will be back tomorrow with trivia. Uh, I hear the morning show is actually going to come in tomorrow morning yes. on a Thursday and, <laughs> you know, surprise all you guys with a show. But uh, we will be back tomorrow night. You Levi, thank you surprise. so much. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to doing more episodes with y'all. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. See you guys.